respected dean post graduate studies respected dr c dehrajan dean pdc and r pichi uh, respected the external examiner dr a anandan principal scientist indian institute of uh, seed science regional stations bangalore and uh, faculties students friends and the the participants uh, attended this meeting uh, guest lecture in online good afternoon so uh, today dr a anand is uh, with us he came for conducting final viva was he for the uh, so sadish so now he accepted to deliver a guest lecture on direct seeded rice the potential options for sustainable rice production through crop improvement he is alumni of our institute so he completed his ug program at anabla university during the year 1999 msc in main campus au during year 2001 and he joined uh, as assistant professor in uh, the faculty of agriculture anamal university uh, during the year 2002 then he completed uh, the phd program in 2006 and uh, in 2013 he directly joined as a uh, senior scientist through the direct recruitment by the icai He directly joined as a senior scientist in ICAR National Rice Research Institute, Qatar, and uh, thereafter he elevated as a principal scientist in the year 2016 in the same institutes. Then later he transferred to the Indian Institute of Seed Science, Regional Stations, Bangalore, in the year 2022. So. His area of specialization is in rice, particularly in upland rice. Actually, uh, he awards uh, various he got various awards and uh, obtained various fellowships. The most uh, important one is the recipient of uh, News India UK Research Fellowship in the year 2017-18 to undertake research on association mapping of nutrient use efficiency in rice. apart from that he is the fellow of various uh, uh, science forum and uh, society and uh, he received the the sap eminent biotechnologist award in the year 2014 and he visited iri for attending a training twice one in uh, phenotyping for abiotic stress in rice iri and the another one is in uh, mark resistance selections in rice so some of the salient achievements are uh, he developed and released uh, the early transplanted varieties for early transplant conditions and for irrigated uh, ecology and he released the five aerobic rice varieties and uh, also he is uh, responsible for the development and release of uh, semi deep and deep water ecology varieties and also he identified high micronutrient dense rice genotypes so on so uh, he has was publications uh, he published around 105 uh, papers research papers in national and international journals review papers in national and international journals around 5 and uh, he written 15 book chapters and 12 technical bulletins and four books and 15 popular articles he has good citation index that is citation is about 2908 with the h index of 28 and i10 index of 56 so now he accepted to deliver a guest lecture in direct seed rice so now i request dr anandan to present his lecture on the proposed topic Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for a uh, uh, nice introduction about me.
Okay, today's uh, my presentation is on direct accelerated rise. Uh, in Katak, I was uh, serving as a scientist over there for nine years, and my main work is on uh, direct accelerated rise, on yearly type. So, direct accelerated rise is a potential option for sustainable rice production through crop improvement. The reason I can give you here. So, this is the outline of my presentation: uh, rice ecosystems in India and water productivity, water saving technologies. In that specific to direct zero dry direct zero technique, and then progress made at uh, uh, NRRI and other institutes in the past with regard to dry direct zero rice, and th challenges in dry direct zero rice, and characteristics of future of uh, dry direct zero rice, and towards development of uh, dry DSR, where it is by taking multiple QTLs or genes at NRRI cutter. So if you see the yeah, rice in yeah. India. And water productivity, we have three types of ecosystem. One is irrigated ecosystem, another one is rain-fed, another is rain-fed lowland. If you see in the rain-fed lowland, there are five categories, three categories, four categories are there, like a shallow uh, lowland, intermediate lowland, deep water rice, and very deep water rice. So these rain-fed lowland and upland uh, comprises of about 59% of area when compared to irrigated rice. Irrigated rice is having only 41%. If you see the rain-fed lowland and upland, this area comes mostly in the eastern part of India because we are getting very good rain there. So we are having the rain-fed areas mostly covering in that eastern part of India. If you see the shallow lowland and this uh, intermediate deep water and very deep, it classified based on the level of water accumulated in the field after rain. I can give you an, uh, one visual example that CR-1009, Savitri. So you might be seeing that uh, it's a very tall plant. And compared to the variety developed from Tamil Nadu. Because the CR1000 is developed from the NRR attack. Because it's suitable for lowland and shallow lowland, not for irrigated condition. But since it is popular for idli purpose, it's become popular in South India. Okay, so that is a best example for shallow lowland. So in, in, if you see, uh, since 1950 to 2021, 22, now we have started exporting rice to 199 countries. We moved from uh, since up to 1990. Up to 1990, we are uh, importing the rice. But after uh, 1990, we started exporting rice from ship to mouth. Now we have started exporting the rice. Nearly 22 million tons of rice we are exporting last year. It comprises of 40% of the global supply. It goes from India. So we should feel proud for this one. See, uh, if you see the water productivity, physical water productivity of rice, we can see com we can compare between the different countries. The physical water can uh, water productivity is measured based on the rice output. The physical water productivity is calculated based on the rice output and the amount of water consumed by the rice crop. It's a total water given to the crop that includes rainfall as well as the from the canal irrigation or any irrigation, deep well, bore, uh, bore well, deep well, anything. That is a total water consumed by the rice. That is called as physical water productivity. In India, if you see, 80% of the water goes to the fresh water uh, from, for the agriculture. Among this type of different type of irrigation, mostly we are following the surface irrigation. This surface irrigation is having only 40% irrigation efficiency when compared to the micro irrigation that is having 90% efficiency. If you see in different countries, the China is having good water productivity of 1.8 kg per cubic meter, followed by Philippines, US, Australia, Nigeria, everything. But in India, if you see, it is 0.24 to 0.57 range. Among India, if you see Punjab is having the higher water productivity, physical water productivity compared to other states, because the productivity is higher there. How much water we are giving? We are giving in we are getting in turn the virus productivity there. So Punjab ranks first. If you see in uh, Tamil Nadu, it is having only 0.3. So this is the irrigation water productivity. I said earlier physical water productivity. This is irrigation water productivity. Irrigation water productivity is measured based on the crop crop output per unit of irrigation water actually applied. That means the farmers is incurring some expenditure to irrigate the field. So that is from the, except from rainfall, whatever we are irrigating from the canal 
or deep bore well or well anything that is called as irrigation water productivity if you see in uh, irrigation this is a map for uh, on the right side it is a irrigation water productivity of different states the punjab i said punjab is having higher productivity punjab is having higher water product higher water productivity and also higher field product, this one productivity but if you see the irrigation water productivity is having only 0.22% you can see it's a 0.22 percent, 0.22. Whereas if you see in Tamil Nadu, it is 0.29. If you see this eastern part of India, it is having Jharkhand is having the maximum of 0.68 water productivity, followed by uh, Assam, Assam, Bihar, and all is having maximum. So this is the graph which depicts the uh, irrigation water productivity, physical water productivity, and percentage of area under irrigation. It is at the states are arranged based on the irrigation water productivity on descending order, which is having the maximum irrigation water productivity. The Jharkhand is having the maximum irrigation water productivity, followed by Chhattisgarh, Bihar, Assam, all these eastern parts comes into here, followed by our south, south and western part of India, like Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, West Bengal, Punjab, and Haryana. The first four or five states, if you see, they are having higher maximum water productivity with minimum percentage of area under irrigation. The blue line indicates that area of irrigation, area of uh, rice cultivation under irrigation. So if you see in uh, Jargon, it is having only 3% of area under irrigation in rice. Then if you see in Assam, it is having only uh, some 13%. If you see uh, this one, uh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Punjab and Haryana, they are having around 100% area under irrigation. We don't have much area under rain fed condition. So wherever, so these places are having maximum area under irrigation, whereas on left side is having minimum area under irrigation. So the irrigation water productivity is higher here. So in on the left side, if right side, if you see these states are exploited in the groundwater to the maximum extent. So we are irrigating everything from the pump by using pump from the well or canal, everything. But on the left side, they are not utilizing anything. The reason is that. One is that agriculture uh, procurement policies varies between these two uh, groups of states, and the the right side is having free free electricity power, as well as uh, some um, subsidies they are giving for the power. So in Tamil Nadu, if you see Tamil Nadu and Punjab, and all, the farmers is getting free electricity, whereas here they are not having free electricity. So because of that, we are exploiting the too much of water. So if you see then uh, transplanted rice, TPS means trans for transplanted rice. In India, three by fifth of the grain harvest comes from the predominantly from the irrigated land. That is from irrigated uh, area. In transplanted rice, we require 2,295 millimeter of water for field preparation and irrigation. Out of this 2,295 millimeter, 45 percent of water is lost through evaporation, evaporation, evaporation transpiration. For one kg of rice to Require one kg of rice, we need 5,000 liters of water. So, so much we are exploiting the groundwater. So, because of this, the groundwater level is going very below the normal condition. In India, if you see the exploitation of groundwater risen from 113 fold from 1950 to 19, 2004. In Punjab alone, if you see 1.9 lakhs of tubule was there in 1970. Now, in 2010, it has become 14 lakhs. But I can give a given good example. Uh, I am uh, from the Salam district of Tamil Nadu. There, in my childhood days, we used to get a uh, deep bore well at 400 uh, feet. Nowadays, we are going up to 1,000 feet. So I can tell you that this is the best example for how much we are exploiting the groundwater. Then flooded rice also, this transplanted rice, is a major contributor for the methane gas, for the greenhouse effect. So I said that since we are exporting 20 to 22 million tons of rice to 199 countries, we should feel proud because of improvement in agriculture. But in the same way, if you see, last year itself, we have virtual water. If you see, we have exported 18 billion cubic meter we have exported to 199 countries. The alone water alone we are, expect, uh, we are exporting. Indirectly, we are exporting. So you see that how much we are explore, exploring or uh, exploiting our water table. So it is estimated in Asia by 2025, at least 30, 15 million hectares of uh, rice area will suffer from physical water scarcity. 
and if you see in agriculture the uh, the agriculture work declined from 59 to 39 percent from 1991 to 2001 so because of this we are not getting a regular labor in for the agriculture purpose then total farm uh, power availability now has increased from 0.3 kilowatt per hectare to 2.54 kilowatt per hectare up to 20 so that we have achieved little bit in the farm power but if you see the overall mechanization our country is in, uh, we are having mechanization of a 40 48% which is much lower than china and brazil they are having 50 60% and 70% respectively so to overcome this and to avoid excess use of water for rice several uh, workers have reported several approaches to reduce the water use efficiency to increase the water use efficiency in rice and water saving technology if you see for example saturated soil culture is there in this if you the the level of water in the field if you increase the level of water the percolation loss will be more so in this technology they used to have thin film of water so uh, this uh, percolation loss will be less in this saturated uh, soil culture as an alternate wetting and drying it is like uh, one day uh, you will be giving irrigation once the water reaches below 15 cm then you will be going again second irrigation so it's the alternate wetting and drying so ground cover system in this system uh, they will be doing transplanting after transplanting they will be covering with mulch with plastic or anything to avoid evaporation loss then system rice intensification uh, yes, sri technique here you will be knowing this after uh, hairline crack we will be irrigating the field so anyhow how uh, it's a rice based uh, planting is there there we will be pl planting in the rows uh, furrows so by this way they are uh, compared to transplanted rice here they saved the water but however in this technique the water loss was uh, we, they could not minimize further so the better option is that direct seeded rice here there is no need to prepare any puddle field we can directly go for sowing so in direct seeded rice if you see only 50% less uh, labor is required when compared to the irrigated rice then water productivity will be productivity will be 64 to 88% we can save here and we can go for mechanized practice nowadays uh, for sowing we need we are having a good machinery two seeds can sow in per hill like that precision has come in this one then weed control we can do by her, uh, this one uh, by uh, herbicide application then harvesting has come with the mechanized then here in uh, direct seed rice crop matures 7 to 14 days yearly when compared to transplanted rice and also the uh, this one we can get more carbon credit by reducing the emission of methane 30 to 40% reduction is there methane emission so this is the progress we made at nrri katak and we have started the breeding for aerobic rice direct seeded rice in 2007 by utilizing the uh, germplasm and exotic materials from iri and we hybridized and we followed the pedigree method of selection for developing a variety for aerobic rice for dry, dry direct seeded rice so in 2012 we first released a variety cr than 200 for the state of odisha then subsequently we released uh, 10 varieties till date and all these varieties the duration ranges from 110 to 120 days with yield potential of uh, maximum 4.5 but in farmers field also it will be little less compared to this one this is all from experimental side and, and uh, if you see in other institutes overall country till date 32 varieties are released 10 from uh, nrr katak and 22 from other institutes here also we could not move more than 4.5 tons per hectare the reason is that yield is declining in 22 to uh, less when compared to the irrigated rice that's around 20 to 30 percent yield reduction was there in aerobic rice and then continuous cultivation of aerobic rice 17 percent yield decline was observed because uh, the root growth has not been well uh, kind of here they, the root growth is constrained because of several factors like hydrogen peroxide accumulation proline and uh, total soluble protein like that and if you see in the direct seeded rice, weeds are the major constraint here. You will see that I have seen today in your plot, wherever this fellow kept fallow, I could see that lot of weeds. If you go there for direct seeded, it's very difficult. So weed constraint is here. It can be overcome by using a herbicide application. So timely herbicide application, you can monitor this one. And we can use the weed competitive varieties with early vigor like that. And nutrient dynamics. If you see, since the uh, aerobic condition is a dry condition, the available of nutrient is uh, not sufficient to the plant like nitrogen phosphorus zinc and iron if uh, moisture is there nutrient availability more 
and then pest and diseases. Root node nematode is a major problem in direct cellular rice. Because of continuous uh, aerated condition, the nematode population buildup is more and it affects the plant growth. Similarly, the brown spot appears wherever the nutrient deficiency is there, brown spot appears and then followed by rice blast and bacterial blight is there. So based on this uh, constraint, we have learned this, all these constraints and problem. We have identified several donors and QTL uh, traits, QTLs for the traits that increase the adaptability of, adaptability of uh, dry direct cell condition to where identified at NRI cutter. So if you see, these are the traits necessary for uh, dry direct cell rise. I think the font size will be very small. Uh, if you see that in seedling establishment, early uniform emergence is required, important. See, uh, in irrigated rice condition, we are establishing the, uh, we are transplanting the established seedlings. Whereas in direct seeding, we are sowing dry seeded. So the uniform emergence is important here. Then anaerobic germination. What is my anaerobic germination? The seed should have the ability to germinate under low oxygen or no oxygen. Means that whenever the rain is there, it will cover the whole plot. Then seed won't germinate here. They should have the capacity to germinate under low oxygen. Then deep seeding rice. Uh, to avoid weed tolerance, uh, weed competitiveness, they are going for deep seeding rice. In this deep seeding rice, it will be sown at, until depth of two inch also. So they should, they will be having a deep root to reach the uh, uh, deeper surface to, for moisture. And they will have good effective tillers in deep seeding tolerance. On high seedling vigor, it is essential for uh, uh, competitive weed competitors. And herbicide tolerance also required for this. Uh, direct seeded rice uh, characters. Then biodextrose, if you see, it needs nematode, nematode tolerance followed by brown spot and blast. If you see the nutrient uptake, as I said earlier, the low nitrogen tolerance, phosphorus, low phosphorus tolerance, zinc tolerance, iron tolerance is necessary for direct seeded rice because their moisture is limited. So they, ha they should have the good ability to absorb this uh, nutrient. And they should have the capacity to have uh, symbiosis association with mycorrhiza. This mycorrhiza will help to uh, uh, uptake more ammonium and phosphorus from the uh, aerobic soil compared to the transplanted soil. And improved root rates is necessary to uh, uptake more uh, moisture from the deep layer. And if you see the abat stress like anaerobic germination, drought tolerance also required. Grain yield, conical weight and grain yield under DSR condition required. And if you see the uh, lodging resistance, we need a bitter uh, uh, calm strength is required here. So in the first rate, if you see deep sowing and anaerobic germination, as I said, that deep sowing is important for uh, taking a nutrient or uh, moisture from the deep layer. If you see the anaerobic germination, uh, it is it should have the flooding stress tolerance under, uh, sorry, the flooding stress affects the germination immediately after sowing in DSR in rain-fed lowland upland. So whenever uh, immediately after sowing, if heavy rain is there, the field will be flooded. So the farmers are not having that uh, mechanized uh, sowing or maybe a mechanized uh, laser leveler to level the plot. So the topography will be different. Wherever the low lying is there, the field will be flooded there. So the germination will be poor over there. So the, the so therefore the, the seeds should have the capability to germinate under low oxygen or no oxygen, hypoxia or anoxia condition. And one advantage of this one, uh, that they are exploiting in Western countries. If you see in direct seeded, Water seeding is there in Western countries like US. They, since we our farmers are marginal and uh, small farmers, we are having less than one hectare or uh, one acre like that. So we can go for this one. Um, we can manage the weeds in different angle. But if you see in Western countries, they are going for water seeding. They, for 500 hectares, they used to go for going with flight. So that time they used to raise the field level, water level up to 10 centimeter. In the standing water, they used to go for sowing. Pre germinated the uh, seeds they will be sowing. So, by this way, they can control the weeds. The variety which is having the ability to germinate under a flooding condition, they will germinate, whereas weed will, weeds will be controlled. So, these are the advantage of the anaerobic germination. Then, seedling vigor. We are concentrating for both shoot and root vigor. Seedling, if you see this figure on the left side corner, you can see the vigorous plant as well as the non vigorous plant. The vigorous plant is having it's, the canopy is covering the whole soil area, whereas the non-vigorous, if you see, it is not uh, covering the whole uh, soil area. Because of uh, excess sunlight penetration, you can see the weeds are, weeds are there. So we need a vigorous plant which covers the canopy 
uh, which uh, the canopy cover the soil area. So by the way, we can reduce the weed pressure here. So the deep root is necessary for uh, taking moisture from the lower layer and also lateral root for nutrient absorption. Then input responsive should be there and lodging the system should is required for this one. And based on this, we have published several articles uh, in the research journals for seedling vigor like that. In seedling vigor, we have done association mapping with a SSR marker. So we found that on chromosome 2, RM31 uh, is, um, is having association with seedling vigor at 14 days and 28 days. So this can be exploited in the breeding program. Then we have studied the root vigor at seedling stage. So this is the first paper we have seen that in, on root vigor. We have taken on 14th day and 28th day. Two days we have observed the root vigor. We have taken uh, root biomass, crown root number. The crown root number is important for nutrient uptake. And then vigor index for root uh, on 14 days and 28 days and root length, everything. So when you have studied this one in PCA, we found that that root rates, which is characterized on 28th day, is having uh, is contributing major for differentiating the genotypes. Whereas in 14 days, if you see, they are grouped separately, but they are not contributing much for the differentiating the genotypes. And this we have studied the same uh, data we have used for GWAS study. And we found that for root length, sorry, uh, for crown root number, we identified the uh, candidate, putative candidate gene, GLP, uh, GLP T2, that is uh, glycerol uh, 3 phosphase, uh, phosphorus transporter. The phosphorus transporter is important for uptaking of phosphorus. So the, the root, uh, crown root number associated with this uh, uh, gene, candidate gene, GLP2, uh, T2. So the, the crown root is, is essential for, is, is uh, initial root form, formed root, and they are responsive for nutrient uptake. So during early stage of seedling, the phosphorus is very much important. If you see in field condition, we used to recommend the farmers to apply the phosphorus as a basal. The reason is that uh, the root, uh, the early responsive roots will take more phosphorus for root growth. And we found the difference in the haplotype group. In the haplotype, we got A, B, C, three haplotypes. If you see that, it ranges from 12 to 19 numbers per seedling, from root number. From this, our uh, GWAS study, we found that we found 198 QTLs around this many candidate genes we have identified. So all these candidate genes we have observed during 14 and 20 days after sowing. If you see for uh, nitrogen, we, are, we have seen that nitrate transporter, um, uh, this one ammonium transporter, then uh, proline, trans uh, this one, um, peptide transporters, then sulfur transporters, potassium uptake, iron, zinc, phosphorus, along with phosphorus mycorrhiza association, everything we have observed in this, our GWAS study. Like surface rooting. Surface rooting is important for like a crown root, which is uh, necessary for uptake of more nutrient from the surface soil. Like that we have observed and we have made a relative network. The next one is iron deficiency tolerance. This was observed recently uh, in Eastern India. It never ob observed this one, iron deficiency, because their soil is high texture soil. Whereas wherever they are going for uh, low, uh, low texture soil, they, uh, they are observing this iron deficiency. Where in this condition, in aerobic condition, the ferrous becomes ferric, which is not available to the rice plant. So the chlorosis appears in the young seedling itself within 14 days. So based on this, we have uh, uh, started working on this one. And we did a GWAS analysis with the 300 genotypes. And we have uh, proposed a SES course for iron deficiency. And we have seen that uh, in GWAS study, we've identified this uh, um, candidate gene, AKR2B which is involved in chloro chloroplast biosynthesis, which is responsible for chlorophyll biosynthesis as well as the maintaining the integrity of the chloroplast membrane. So uh, if you see this gene, it is also having association with XA21, which is the uh, BLB resistance. There, the functions of uh, this gene both are same, which is involved in the oxidative uh, and um, oxidative responsiveness. Then if you see the SPAD2, we have measured this uh, SPAD value for second leaf and third leaf, and we found that second leaf is for observation under for uh, iron deficiency. And we identified the candidate gene for this SPAD2, uh, which is having chlorophyll index, uh, that H OS HPL3, which is uh, the gene is cytochrome P450, which maintains the chlorophyll integrity and also involves in mimicking the defense responsive via jasmonic acid pathway. This jasmonic acid pathway already they have reported that they are involved in the iron deficiency tolerance. So these two candidates are identified for iron score as well as SPAD value for chlorophyll index. So we have studied also root parameters 
for a mature uh, for a vegetative uh, uh, vegetative stage we found that uh, root, everyone knows that root parameter is important for water use efficiency and nutrient use efficiency since the aerobic rice is always trained, uh, having some stress water stress we have we found that it falls below uh, minus 30 kPa also at 15 cm so therefore the root parameter is important to study here we have taken all our aerobic varieties and we have studied for root parameters and we found that uh, uh, CR than 205 is having good deep root as well as good lateral root and is having high photosynthetic rate, stomatal conductance, intracellular uh, carbon dioxide, transparent, uh, transparent uh, rate, everything. And this as variety has been released for five states in India Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, and Punjab. The reason is that it may be, uh, it may have, because of these root parameters, it is having higher yield. So, might have released for five states when compared to other varieties. Compared to other varieties, other varieties were released for only two states, one states like that. Then we studied the root parameters uh, uh, for uh, some 20, 50 varieties. In that, we have seen, we have categorized into two groups, 1985 to 2005 and 2008 to 2018. So when you have grouped the two uh, groups based on the root uh, ratio of deep rooting and total number of roots in the crown region, root diameter at 10 centimeter depth, we found that the second group, which is in the 2008 to 2018, having the good deep root from 18 to 0.8 to uh, sorry 8 to 31 percent has increased in deep root, as well as uh, root thickness also increased, whereas crown root number has decreased here. So this shows that the varieties which is released after 2007, like aerobic varieties and other multiple stress tolerant varieties, they have good root system compared to the yearly released varieties. The nutrient use efficiency. So among the four nutrients, iron, zinc, um, nitrogen, phosphorus, phosphorus is very important for early establishment of seedling. We have, what we have done, we have selected six genotypes like Dular, Kasalath, IR64, IR64 PUP1, Sabagidan, and GM27217. All these six except IR64 is having p gene. p is a phosphorus tolerant gene which uptakes the phosphorus from the deficient soil. And we have raised uh, in the hydrophonic condition under six different concentrations like 0.5 ppm, then 1 ppm, 2 ppm, 4 ppm, 6, 8, and 10 ppm of concentration of phosphorus. And we have recorded on 14 days after sowing and 20 days after sowing of all morphological traits. And we have grouped here, we have uh, uh, we did a PCA analysis and we found that on 14th day, first 14th day, 14 days, 0.5 ppm, 1 ppm, and 2 ppm, 4 ppm grouped together. Whereas 6 ppm and 8 ppm and 10 ppm grouped together on 14 days. Whereas in 28 days, if you see, this 4 ppm has moved to the opposite group. This shows that at the early stage of seedling establishment, this 4 ppm is a threshold which needs at least minimum 4 ppm to establish the crop seedling. Whereas later, if you see in 28 days, the 4 ppm moves towards this one. So the initial four, uh, this 14 days, the phosphorus requirement is higher for the seedling. And already they have proved that on third day after immediately after germination, the phosphorus transporter started uh, expressing more when compared to any other transporters. And we have done this uh, QPCR analysis for all the transporters of, of 13 uh, transporter genes of PHT1 group. In this, among these 13, PT1, 2, and 6 are highly expressed, including 13, uh, 13 also. This, uh, 2 and 6 are directly involved in the uptake of phosphorus and deficient condition. Based on these studies and in collaboration with ERI, we have proposed a project in the DBT and we got this one and we have started working on this one in 2015 onwards. So in this project, uh, DBT project, we have identified 12 donors with 19 QTLs. These 12 donors comprise of anaerobic germination uh, having two QTLs and early vigor nodal root and then high nutrient uptake QTL grain yield under uh, direct seed condition, lodging resistance, early inform emergence, galmage, deep pH, and blast. We have started this uh, work in 2016 uh, rabi season. Initially, we did uh, everything, uh, polymer, uh, polymorphism we have uh, uh, observed across all the donors for the 19 QTLs. And then uh, we have started crossing with the recurrent parent as well as between the donor. So we have made a conversion cross here. All these 12 donors were crossed between each other, and we finally got 
F1, which is having more than 10 QTMs in 2018. And this F1 was crossed with the recipient parent, two recipient parents, CR then 303 and uh, Lalat And then the F1 was back crossed with, as I said, the uh, recipient parent, and we followed two, uh, two types. One is just we forwarded the forwarded breeding, they forwarded the F1 for forwarded breeding. And next one we across with the recipient and followed the BC2, F1 and BC1 also. And we identified uh, uh, different combinations having QTLs in heterozygous state as well as homozygous states. And finally, we brought down some around 12 to 13 QTLs in a single background. And we tested in the Rabi 22, a direct seeded condition. This is a dry direct seeded, then uh, followed by irrigation, we have given vegetative stage. This is the maturity stage. We found very good expression was there, and he yield also very good in this one. And we have tested also in transplanted condition, all this uh, selected 234 lines. And we have tested all these 234 for anaerobic germination and blast. Uh, we have a, uh, this one, um, a hotspot location, Hazaribag in Jordan. We have tested there also, and we have screened for uh, a BPH also. And we found good tolerant lines. And this is a selected superior high yielding, high yielding plant, which is having good architecture, plant architecture. So in last year, in 2022, we have nominated one entry for uh, aerobic. And we found that it uh, performed well, which is having high tiller, panicle numbers, and grain yield. It is giving 5.4 tons per hectare. Whereas the earlier varieties were giving 4.5 tons per hectare. We got around 5.4 tons per hectare. And it has been promoted to uh, on overall uh, basis to all states. It, now it is in AVG2 aerobic condition uh, trial. In 2023, we nominated five entries for aerobic and early transplant rice. So hopefully we are thinking that we'll be achieving this one with good yield. Thank you. Sir? For hybrid race, sir, for herbicide, they have met up release, sir. IR, not for aerobic or direct signal. They recently got uh, Basmati uh, herbicide tolerance they have released from Pusa. From Katak also, they have released last year, this year, two varieties have been released for herbicide. Super Pasta. Seventy-five days, sir. No, no, sir. Well, the very long slender aero, uh, this one, uh, Basmati, they have introduced with uh, herbicide tolerance and they released that one last year. But nowadays, the her this one, uh, direct seeding race is picking up in Punjab, sir. But it's all depends on situation only. When farmers need uh, the timely sowing is needed, then they'll go for direct seeding. Otherwise, they're not going for that one. They'll be going for the transplanting. That one, they'll correct. They won't go for potential. Once direct seeding means finish that cell. But in the rain, then will uh, It can't be. Water stagnation will be there because of water table is increased because of rain. The rainfall then after dinner, but they some, some, some place you have dense uh, seed leaks. Oh, okay. uh, we can, uh, just so that gap filling they will be doing. Gap filling. Like uh, gap filling they will be doing. So for that only we should uh, expect that a uniform emergence should be there. That rate has to come. Should the 20 to 30% yield reduction? Yes, sir. So for that only we are trying to introduce all these traits to improve that one. And take the parity effect. The field duration is getting reduced. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, that advantage is there. If you go for direct seeding, at least one week to uh, 15 days, the advantage will be there. Obviously. So, water is the basic required. So, those things have to stop it, not merely yield. Uh, water saving is there, labor saving is there, much more is there. But we are thinking only yield. Since farmers are uh, thinking of yield, they are going for transplanter. Quality, sir. We have very early 
super fighter really grand reason here basmati sir they are nowadays it's coming up everything because we are not concentrated on earlier na for uh, direct seeding now only we started doing see in, if you see in katak na sir we are concentrated on yield only so whenever you are going for yield the uh, bold race will come here yeah, so that part. variation is there so we have to change and the eastern part if you see they are eating only uh, medium bold like that southern part only they are getting this fine wise this for bold race they go for direct seeding so so okay yes sir okay. So this method is alternative for the definitely sir it, it is going to come because we are not getting in labor nowadays we are not getting in the sense in rice almost from transplanted to harvest is a cut rice and most of the farmers are going for strategy and uh, harvest by most of the way It's optimum duration, sir. No, what is it? Yes, sir. We have to shorten the duration. What is optimum duration? Optimum uh, uh, for four point five to five point. Can I reduce beyond certain say beyond seventy eighty like that? Whether it is ninety plus ninety to hundred or less than ninety. So we are doing up to one twenty. Up to one twenty. Means the number of rainfall. If you see in Eastern India, no, sir. Is in there? They will be getting not less than thousand five hundred. For them, there is no issue. That's why their water productivity is higher. If you see south uh, southern India, then duration you have to reduce it definitely. Yeah. It should get to within hundred days. Within that four hundred days, we have to get the yield. That is the pain. Today I have seen sir in uh, Nagaland. One report was there. They are getting Kurkum uh, or some uh, one place is there in Nagaland. They are getting only four fifty mm of water. Mm of rainfall per year. So they are having good system of uh, water storage facilities, everything, and they cultivating paddy there. In the elite track, direct sim. Then why can't we, sir? I don't know. They are doing. They are doing rice. They started doing rice. Irrigation. Sir, what is the rice production? Even there, they are recommending for rice to grow. That so should not waste water. So now they are changing their policy. Should not grow rice here and there. From you, is it? So they are promoting the land set up. That's all. Not in the water level. But they are developing saline tolerance for that one. They started working. The cost of life, the cost of the cost of generation. So they are recommending only herbicides only. Yes, sir. So immediately after sowing, we can go for pendimethylene. Within 24 hours after irrigation, you have to go go for pendimethylene for pre-emergence. So then after 14 days, within 14 days, when the leaf is having two leaf stage, that time you can go for pre-emergence, post-emergence. Then definitely you can control the weeds. Yeah, that's for organic farming. That's for residue free farming. So now you are telling that beside us, you must for recommended practices. Is it possible without that? We thought the head was a different. Now now we are slowly raising. Even organic farming is not possible. At least the residue free farming. So the service that I think the residues won't be there. Sir, uh, uh, you are doing in first 15 days only. After that, you are not going to spray herbicide. Once crop covers the cannot be cannot be covers the soil area, then there is no use of using herbicide. Change from four hundred to We cannot say it is either because rice or paint for trees. It's direct on rice. Yes, direct seeded rice. Yeah. We have to exploit the rainwater. That is, we are getting more than thousand. Means there is no question of either. No, sir. Once you are getting sufficient rain, there is no yeah. issue of this one. Yeah. The initial cost you can reduce by going direct seeded rice. Timely sowing you can do everything. But here, now what is your specialty? Now I am started doing in uh, seeds. Little to seed vigor I am doing. Seed vigor. Seed vigor. Now in this institute, also in this institute, same work you are continuing. I'm trying to continue that same, but they are telling that we have to follow seed quality parameters, everything, because it's seed institute. Any others online? Are there questions? Can you ring la? What they be? Shantika. 
ಹಿಂಗೆ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೂಮೆಂಟ್ that even two seeds per hill you can go for swing in rice seed drill is there tractor drill seed drill is there you can do that perfection has come now in panja pandal they are using that seed drill only water release the product that the water is not the problem it is can okay my dab water correct right illa for that better we can go for direct seeding only direct seeding when water comes then you can select the plot sure august kada ketta nan iniki yeah the plot ipdi iruk kala la irukku no that that june first week you should get water we are not doing any water like that we are doing green medium there so delay of just only two drops are not possible in such case can you go green medium then you can reduce the weed pressure then or fine ma pay no ಒಳಿಲ್ ಪಕ್ಕ ಪಾತ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇಡ್ಲಿ ಕಣಿ ಹಿಂಗಿಚ್ಚಿ ರೋಡ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೇಟ ನಾವು ಟೂ ಡೇಸ್ ನಾಗ ರೈನ್ ಮುನ್ನಾರ್ಲೆ ರೈನ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಬಂದಾಂಗ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ ನಿಮಗೆ ವೀಕ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಕೊರಕಲಾ ವೀಕ್ ಅಂತ ಅದು ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಮಾಡಿ ಪ್ಲೂಮಿಯಂ ಸಲ ಎಂ ಪಿ ಏರಿಯಾ ಗೆ ಬಿಡ್ರ ಸರ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ರೋಬಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ ಎಸ್ ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು So thank you for this giving this opportunity sir thank you sir thank you okay thank you all to so good afternoon uh, once again so i thank uh, our guest speaker dr a anandan principal scientist indian institute of seed science bangalore for giving an elaborate lecture regarding direct seeded rice he stressed the challenges in exploitation of water and also the challenges faced by the direct seeded rice and how to cope up with the uh, losses by biotechnological genetic approaches so very detailed lecture thank you sir i thank uh, honorable vice chancellor and dean school of post graduate studies for giving approval and uh, fund allocation to the guest lecture i thank dean ac and ri madurai for his support in organizing i thank president of uh, department of plant breeding and genetics for giving a uh, encouragement and support in organizing this uh, lecture then i thank uh, department of uh, procedural department of uh, agricultural engineering for giving transport arrangements i thank uh, procedural department of uh, agricultural economics for giving uh, for arranging the video conference hall nice arrangement and i thank Uh, Procedure Department of Agronomy for giving uh, accommodation for the guest speaker. And I once again thank uh, all the university officers, scientists and uh, students, both online and offline, for giving support in conducting successfully. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.